Hello everyone and welcome back to the Yellow Dog 3D Tips blog. Today I'm going to be showing you how we can make this destruction uh, simulation in Cinema 4D using a plugin called Turbulence FD. And we're going to use a little bit of cloth simulation as well. So I provided this um, barrel scene for you to uh, follow along with so you should be able to download the asset from uh, the Yellow Dog blog site. So let's jump straight in. So the first thing we need to do is uh, select our barrel in the hierarchy, go to tags, um, simulation tags and make this a cloth. Um, and the next thing we need to do is go to simulate cloth and cloth surface and um, you just need to drop the barrel into this and um, the tearing of the barrel won't work without doing this so once you've done that um, we can go to simulate and uh, you want to add an attractor um, in the particles uh, drop down menu um, and we want to go to the cloth tag we just um, put on go to the expert tab and just drop the attractor into there and that's just going to allow the cloth to talk to the attractor object. So in the attractor object options, go to the um, object tab and in strength, we're just going to put minus 150. Um, and in the fall off, we're going to make this a sphere. And in the size options, we're going to put 10 by 10 by 10. So there we go. And I'm just going to have to drag that down uh, so we can see it. So just move that down in the Y position. And uh, we just want this to touch sort of the top of the barrel. So um, the bottom of the sphere needs to sort of touch the top of the barrel just like that um, so if we play that now you'll see we get a really weird effect so to make this work right we need to go into the cloth tag and under forces I'm just going to turn the gravity off so the barrel doesn't drop down um, and obviously this doesn't look right just yet we don't want the barrel to just melt so if we go to the tag um, tab and check the uh, checkbox that says use tear you can see that it starts to destruct the barrel which is what we want to see so there we have it, we're getting the basic effect that we want to see. It's quite rough and ready, so I mean it's it's not looking perfect, but my reasoning for this is that it's going to be covered by flames anyway, so you might not see sort of how rough it looks. I'm actually going to change the attractor strength to just minus 100 instead of uh, minus 150 to make the effect less abrupt. So I'm quite happy with that now, so I'm going to go into the cloth tag, go to cache and just click calculate cache and I'll just let that run through. Okay, so now we've got this cache simulation of the barrel destructing. I've cached it so it's going to be the same every time. We don't want to be re-simulating it um, using pointless processing power every time we hit play. So the next stage is just to create some geometry for our flames to emit from. So I'm just going to go up to the uh, geometry tab and just create a cylinder. I'm going to put the radius to around, uh, let's say, 4.5 and the height to, uh, let's say, 5. Again, I'm just going to move this down in the Y position. Um, I'm just trying to guess where that is. I'll just move it up to where I think should be right. So this is going to be where the flames are going to be emitted from. So just try and position them accordingly. So next we need to create our container for the flames. So we need to go to plugins, um, turbulence FD and turbulence FD container. And this is going to be where the flames live uh, and the simulation takes place. The simulation can only take place within this box. So you need to set up the grid size. So this is just how big the box is. So I'll do it 50 by 100 by 50 not 5,000, yep, 50, 150, and I'll just move it up a little bit so the flames have somewhere to travel to, and I'm going to right click the cylinder, go to turbulence FD tags, and create a turbulence FD emitter, and under the channels is where our simulation is sort of controlled, and straight away I'm just going to set the temperature, the density, the fuel, and the burn to 1, um, the temperature is sort of how hot the simulation is, density controls the smoke, fuel is sort of how much fuel the fire gets, and the burn is obviously how much it ignites. You might want to experiment with some of these parameters because they all interact with each other. It's interesting to see um, what each one of them does individually, but for now I'm just going to set them all to 1 so we can get a simulation going. So to see what's happening I'm going to go to plugins, turbulence FD, and go to simulation window. I'm going to set this to interactive and click start, and you'll see that we start to get a simulation. I'm going to stop this. I'm going to actually use the fire shader um, in the viewport. So go to viewport preview, go to the channel and set this to temperature and, and use the fire shader. And now when we hit start, you'll start to see we've got our flame simulation going already. And this interactive view is really good because it allows you to tweak um, settings on the fly. So I'm going to go back into the cylinder um, emitter tab and change the temperature value to 0 0.5. And you'll see that um, it starts to rise a little bit slower. So I'm going to set this to yeah 0 0.5 um, just so the flame doesn't move as upwards as fast. And I'm going to go back to the Turbulence FD container, go to Simulation and go to Vorticity. And this is going to really drastically change the look of the simulation, so I'll just um, move this to around 10. And Vorticity is basically the tendency of the simulation to sort of 
circulate or um, sort of spin. So I'll just leave this at around 8 um, so we're getting a nice sort of organic look. And turbulence is obviously how turbulent the um, simulation looks. So if I move this up a little bit, it's quite hard to see the exact effect this is having because the vorticity um, is affecting it so much. But this is sort of just making the flames a little bit more turbulent in nature. So I'll just turn the vorticity off um, just for now so we can see what effect the turbulence is having. So you can see how that's affecting it. So I'll just put the vorticity back up to 8 and um, I'll leave this intensity around 20. And let's just go down to temperature, and um, this is where we can control how fast the um, flame rises. So if we go into the buoyancy, I'm just going to make it a bit less buoyant. So let's put it to 5. You can see that the flame now doesn't rise as high, which is what we want. We don't want it to hit the top of the fluid container. Um, so I'll set this to around 10. And just make sure that doesn't hit the top of the box, because we don't want it being cut off. So yeah, that's looking pretty good to me. Make sure your density is active because that's sort of um, where your smoke is controlled. And fuel, uh, we can just leave this parameter for now. So I'm quite happy with the way this is looking. Um, so how do we create the explosion? So if we go back into the um, emitter tab on the cylinder and go down to force, if we change this uh, pressure parameter, we can see that sort of pushes the flame out from its um, emission point. So let's put that to 20. You can see it's really pushing it out now. So um, we can actually keyframe this parameter. So at the start of our simulation, um, well, at frame 3, we're going to put this pressure to 0 because we don't want it to start straight away. At 5, I'm going to put it to 10. And then at, let's say, 11, I will put this back down to 0 and set a keyframe. So let's just click start and see what's happening. So you see it's behaving sort of how you would expect an explosion to behave. It sort of puffs out to start with and then it dies back down to its emission point. So I'm just going to cache this out um, just using in a cache instead of interactive just so we can see it's definitely working right. And it is. So that's pretty much what I wanted. I think um, what we can do now is actually keyframe the temperature because we don't want the flames to start straight away. So I'm going to put this to zero. Um, and then set a keyframe on frame 3. I'm just going to go across one frame and set this to uh, 2. And then I'm going to go across to um, actually, I'm going to change this pressure keyframe to around frame 20 instead. And I'm also going to keyframe the temperature now to 0 0.5 at uh, frame 20. So it goes from no f uh, flames to an explosion to sort of just flames. And I actually think we can make this explosion, uh, the pressure, a little bit higher. So I'm just going to re-keyframe that as 25. So you can see that really bursts out now. And I'm just a bit afraid that's going to hit the top of the simulation box and cut off the simulation. But I think this interactive view doesn't um, respond very well to um, keyframes after the first keyframes, if that makes sense. So it isn't dying off, which is a bit unexpected. I think if we actually just used a standard cache instead of the interactive cache, it would take into consideration that next pressure keyframe where we turned it down. So I'll just put this to cache and uh, hit start and just see what this does. It'll ask you if you want to overwrite your old cache, uh, which we do. So there we go, we've got the explosion and it should start to die off, um, which it is doing. So yeah, it's, that's just a bug with the interactive um, simulation type, I think it just doesn't take into consideration some of the further keyframes. So as you can see, the explosion doesn't start quite when the barrel explodes, so we just need to move some of these um, start keyframes back to frame zero, just to sort of try and time it up a little bit better. So I'm going to re-cache this and uh, just look at the timing. So yeah, that looks pretty bang on to me. So I'm just going to watch through this a little bit just to make sure it's um, simulating correctly. So yep. Yeah. It looks correct to me, but the next thing we need to do is make it so the flames don't last forever. So I'm going to go back up to the cylinder emitter tab, and I'm going to um, make it so the flames die out at a certain point. So at frame, let's say 90, I'm going to set another temperature keyframe, and I'm going to move across a few frames and set the temperature to zero. Um, and I'm just going to recast this one last time just so we can see it looks right before we up the resolution of the simulation. Um, before we render, we're going to up this resolution so uh, the flames just look a lot more realistic. So this is just to check that the flames are behaving correctly. Um, so I'll just let it run past frame 90. It should start to die off. Uh, so 
there we go the flames dissipate and everything's finished burning so I'm happy with that and it looks like a good simulation to me so once we're happy with that the next thing we need to do is make sure everything's gonna render correctly so in the container we're gonna go to rendering and under smoke shader we need to change the mapping to density and uh, once we've done that I'm just gonna hit render so you can see it's rendering we can't really see much of that smoke right now so I'm gonna go to the color and opacity I'm gonna change the thickness to 100 and I change the color to black and I'll just hit render once again and that has changed the look of it it might have been quite hard to tell because we're on a black background but you'll definitely see it when you're looking at the uh, sort of finished uh, rendered version so now we need to go to the simulation tab and go to uh, solver and change the advection on the velocity and channel to second order and this is going to affect the simulation time but it'll add a little bit more detail to the tips of the flame and now we need to go to container and under voxel size this is where we control the master resolution of the simulation so I just changed that to 0 0.1 which is going to create 10 times more resolution on our simulation which is going to take a long time to simulate so I'll pause it here so here is our new simulation as you can see there's far more detail in it it looks a lot more photorealistic um, but there is something that we forgot to do and that's to add the barrel as a collision object so to do that we just need to select the barrel go to tags turbulence FD tags and turbulence FD emitter and just tick the collision object box and then um, once you've done that it's gonna make the barrel um, collide with the flames it's gonna make it look a little bit better and also under the cache under the container properties you just need to set up a decent folder for your um, cache files to go in they do take up a lot of space so make sure you've got enough room on your hard drive so just set up a um, appropriate folder and uh, then when you cache it all the cache files are gonna go there um, this simulation took around uh, six gigabytes in total so I'll just let that cache out and I'll pause the video here here we are so I've let it simulate out and I've uh, done a little bit of a render of it as you can see there's tons of detail in that flame now it's looking really realistic there is a bit of a problem um, in the simulation and that's that you can see the emitter object the cylinder that's inside of the barrel the flames are sort of obviously making it really obvious where that is I should have moved it further down into the barrel or sort of made it a little bit smaller but other than that um, that's how you make a really quick and easy exploding barrel simulation inside of Cinema 4D. But yeah, thanks once again for watching. This has been the Yellow Dog 3D Tips blog. Stay tuned for more 3D tips. Cheers.